Hello, I'm Andrew Malloy, the Automation Wizard. Uh, hopefully you've watched the video on setting up power for Obsidian. Uh, this is the the uh, Obsidian Vault where I did that. Um, if not, you should check that out. Uh, but what I want to go through now is basically uh, how I've adapted this for, for myself. For, so basically going beyond power, uh, as I call it. So. Um, I'm going to switch to my actual uh, in-use vault. Uh, so if you go down here to Obsidian, you can open another vault. This brings you back to the main menu when you first first ever used Obsidian. So back here, and uh, in my case, I'm calling my vault Life OS. It's my intention to basically pull everything together uh, in the Obsidian vault. Uh, so I'll open it now. Okay, so I'm just going to go through So here I've actually made some notes on what I'm going to record here uh, So you can see here Just the actual oval outline uh, But the main thing to look at here uh, is this is my entire structure as it is so First, I'm going to go through where is para in this and then where and why I've gone beyond that uh, and why I find it useful. So uh, the first thing to note is basically the change of names. Um, I uh, figure that this, this is an area where you can just make things your own. You don't need to stick to the exact structure and system of anyone else just do what you feel is right for you so in my case I'm not only just doing that but I'm looking into gamification uh, trying to kind of make it more fun so hence uh, I'm using this so this is first one uh, I'm calling it quests so this is my projects folder but I'm calling them quests then areas are my guilds so you can sort of see a fantasy role-playing game theme going on here and then uh, the other one is research, so in para we have projects, areas, research. Uh, research here is actually my library. Uh, basically just everything I put my references in. Um, uh, so yeah, so quests, guilds, library, and then vault is what I'm calling my archive. Uh, just to sort of try and keep it in theme. And uh, so it's just basically a renaming scheme. Uh, for that, uh, so the next thing after uh, just the idea of just renaming what Parrot is, is what I mean by going beyond it, is there are other things that I felt I needed to add in there. Uh, some things are kind of assumed in other apps um, and, and not really talked about strictly in Parrot, so uh, what I've added here, uh, as you can see, is an inbox. Um, so this is where my quick capture goes into, where I'm not necessarily sure or decided where it will go organizationally, or maybe I don't even have anything set up for it. So just a quick capture, I have an, a place for an inbox. So if I go in there, I've got a random file that I want to sort as well. And then I've got my actual inbox notes, which is just where I quick capture everything. Um, and I can do that from other tools. I've got a video on how I do that from mobile and using the Drafts app. So inbox uh, is the first edition uh, to it. The second edition is what I call map here. Uh, I credit uh, Matt Ragland for, for what he calls in his, his system is on deck. Um, and and also Matt uh, uses a, a more sports theme to, to his system, uh, which is also what gave me the idea to just come up with my own theme as well. Uh, so basically this is for future projects or future strategy. Uh, this becomes more a way of doing real project management. Um, the Paris system puts all projects, whether they're being worked on or to be worked on, or maybe there's a, a 
justification of fleshing out ideas in your areas in, or guilds is what I call but I um, agree with Matt here that I feel like I need somewhere to put future projects that I know I'm going to work on so I kind of have a structure in mind but I don't want to clutter my current projects that I'm working on uh, so you want to keep the current quests minimal uh, this isn't about putting everything that you ever want to do in here uh, is yeah as I say it kind of becomes very busy and cluttered otherwise uh, and very difficult to then sort things as well so that's why I have this map section is to this this is where I know I want to do projects but I can't or don't want to start on them now uh, so that's my other addition uh, a couple more additions here are log and dashboard so I'll go through the log first so log is basically where I'm journaling uh, so this is something that's not strictly para either uh, is uh, you may be journaling separately but as I said I kind of want this as an entire system so this is where I put my journal especially because there may be relevant notes or thoughts that I have in there and um, or just keeping notes for the day uh, as I have here um, so I use uh, drafts again for for actually writing my journal at the moment uh, and again that just sends straight to to the right correct page in the log uh, it uses a plugin called daily notes um, I've got a video on how to set that up uh, so this very much covers a very roam research approach to entering data and crypt capture in, in the system uh, so I find it useful uh, to have that uh, as well so I keep that separate because there's not really any specific place to put that you could arguably make that part of your areas kind of daily journaling uh, but I like to have it separate as a high level item by itself so vault as I said is archive uh, I've just not numbered it to just keep it at the bottom here and uh, the other thing is dashboard uh, so in the same way that Notion is very much a dashboard approach to things um, there isn't quite a dashboard approach in Obsidian that's one thing it's relatively weak on uh, so I've been experimenting with having an overall uh, dashboard just to keep on top of everything at a high level and have a single place to keep track of things um, so this also leads on to the other side uh, uh, this also leads on to another uh, thing that I want to talk about is uh, this is very much unfinished the work in progress and experiment experimentation and that's the other thing you should think about going beyond para is just bring in and look at other things that go beyond para in terms of functionality your specific needs and the actual tool that you're wanting to use um, taking that further and what else you can do with that so I want to do more experimentations with templating and, and plugins within uh, Obsidian and also using external tools, which is also the nice thing about Obsidian is you can use other tools to work on the same data underneath. Um, so that's basically it for going beyond para is, is uh, just to sum it up is uh, you don't have to stick to the exact naming convention. You can add in your own kind of twist on things uh, your own theme uh, you can extend it to whatever suits you best um, another aspect if I just open my current quests is I talked about making everything a subfolder and I haven't done that here uh, just because I've not needed more than a single note page uh, so uh, even Tiago uh, emphasizes this as well as break your own rules uh, there's, there's no kind of para police watching you if you want to create a systematic syst uh, number of rules to follow but then you feel that you're working more to the rules and the rules actually helping you feel free to actually just break them um, the one word of caution is to not get too carefree with that and uh, you just end up with chaos and uh, a disorganized mess which is the complete opposite of the whole point of doing this in the first place but don't worry just be flexible uh, and 
Uh, the other thing is just experiment and try different and new things, uh, especially with the tools. Uh, they're all coming out with new features all the time and just different ways. Uh, one other nice thing about Obsidian is, is it, so you can just get started and you can develop and evolve it uh, as you need it to. Uh, so it kind of grows with you and as you develop your own system. Uh, so that's some of the uh, kind of barrier to entry of the other tools is you kind of need to understand the tool quite a bit before you can even get started or understand the features and you're kind of fitting things into the tool. There's an aspect of that here with the folders, but as I said, because it's under, underlying that just the folder and file structure of your actual computer, um, it follows a paradigm that you're already used to using anyway, uh, ever since uh, computing began, basically. Uh, there are aspects to this about how you tie in mobile devices as well, but um, I can cover that in another video, uh, especially when Obsidian released their mobile app. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of where you can go from here. Um, and if you have any thoughts, suggestions, uh, let me know how you're changing power or going beyond it. Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the bell for notifications. Uh, thanks for watching.